This is the Minister's Crucible. I'm Fred Rochester. Thanks for listening. Uh, Paul the Apostle gave Timothy some very good advice. And we're going to go through these uh, things in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and also in Titus. And uh, this will help us to understand exactly what uh, pastors, uh, teachers are supposed to be doing in terms of providing the teacher, uh, the people, sound doctrine. And, and that's what Paul starts off with in the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment, of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ our hope. Uh, Yes, it was a commandment that Paul received to be an apostle. Remember that he was on the road to Damascus uh, after he received letters to go after Christians. And the Lord Jesus uh, disturbed his quest to subdue the Christians because he was anti-Christ. And so the Lord Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus, and that was where he had the initial calling of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it was a commandment. And so now verse 2, to Timothy, a true son in the faith. Obviously, Timothy was uh, born again under the ministry of Apostle Paul. And so he uh, turns out to be the kind of son that a lot of pastors uh, wish that they would have. Timothy was young, and of course he was ambitious, but he also learned very well. And so we'll see that later on in 2 Timothy chapter two, uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 7, uh, and so forth. But now let's continue. By gra- uh, uh, To Timothy, a true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. And I like to preface here in the New King James Version that gives us a good uh, summation of what this passage here is speaking of, and it's called No Other Doctrine. What better way to start the uh, epistle uh, to uh, Timothy than to uh, command him not to teach uh, No Other Doctrine? And so in verse 3, Paul says, As I urged you, When I uh, went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. And that's very important because we always have people that want to teach doctrine and, and, and it gets out of hand. It gets so out of hand and people come up with strange doctrine, doctrine that don't even sound right. Yet people gravitate to these things and it is so sad. But, no, but nonetheless, Paul tells Timothy, charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and fables of myths and endless genealogies. Endless genealogy means that it can go on and on and on and on trying to determine or to um, uh, uh, count out people that were Jews or uh, count out people that were not Jews. And so Endless genealogies can go on and on and on and on. You can argue all day long about I'm a Jew, you're not a Jew, all day long. But Paul said, don't give heed to these things, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. And so uh, fables and endless genealogies will not cause you to be built up in Christ. All it will do is produce disputes. Verse 5, Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. Now we got to remember that Paul uh, was taught up, uh, Paul was brought up under the tutelage of Gamaliel. And and so uh, Paul knows a thing or two about the law, he being a Pharisee himself, because of, of what it says in the book of Philippians, that he, he was uh, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, uh, uh, when it concerns, uh, as concerning the law, blameless. 
And so he knows a thing or two about the law and anyone that attempts to dispute him concerning the things of the law, you got to remember, you're dealing with someone that is no longer a Pharisee that was trained and brought up under the tutelage of Gamaliel. And so they have a desire, these people that Paul uh, tells Timothy to charge, they have a desire to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. You mean to tell me that the law is good? A lot of people have discounted the law and pretty much set it aside by saying, for we are not under the law, but under grace. And that's true. Uh, We are not under the schoolmaster, as Paul said in the book of Galatians. But you got to understand something that the law in and of itself in and of itself is still in effect. Why? Well, all you have to do is look down the list and, and ask yourself a question. Since I'm under grace, can I get away with these things? No, you can't. Now, I know that the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter eight and verse one, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Uh, For the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, we all know what that says. And we 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 kind of say, well, now that I'm under grace, then I can get away with it. No, you can't. The law is still effective. Look what Paul said in verse eight. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. See how important sound doctrine is? We have to stay within the middle or in uh, in the middle of the road within the confines of sound doctrine. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed blessed God which was committed to my trust. So let's stay with sound doctrine. You can't go wrong with staying with sound doctrine. As boring as it may seem, if we stay within sound doctrine, then people will grow up, people will be edified, people will be strengthened in sound doctrine and sound teaching, not going off on fables and myths and and things that sound uh, crazy, mysterious, and spooky. No, we need to stay with the sound doctrine of the word because that is what's going to make the difference. You've been listening to The Minister's Crucible. I'm Fred Rochester. Thanks for listening.